Hi students, uh, we are back with some amazing tips and tricks for your NEET MDS preparation. My name is Dr. Amir. Hi students, I'm Dr. Sahil. And in this video, we have some exceptional tips that are going to be helpful for your NEET MDS. Starting with explanation reviewing. Now a lot of students struggle with uh, the balance to read a lot of data and to filter out a lot of data and to retain that data. And reading your explanation is a very important part of the preparation. It is necessary that you write it down in your notes or you can uh, bookmark the questions. But there is a strategy that goes with explanation reviewing. And in this video, we will go through a few different types of questions. They are very easy questions, but the explanations are the kinds that you need to focus on. And uh, we have tabulated image based a lot of different types of stuff here. So Dr. Sahil and I, as you know, that we have a lot of content created for your help and for your uh, optimum preparation. And this is, video is going to be one of the better videos to help you understand what you should be doing at this stage. Yes. So right. now we will tell you how to filter out the contents from the big, big paragraphs that you, how you have to focus on the keywords and the key points in the explanations. OK, let's start, Doctor. So. Uh, as you can see on my screen, the question is right here. We will not be focusing on the question per se or the topic. We just want you to understand what should be your strategy when reading an explanation. So a very easy question. Which of the following will be most severely affected tooth from nursing caries? Options are mandibular canines, mandibular second molars, maxillary incisors and mandibular incisors. Now, normally you would just uh, tick the answers that mandibular incisors are hardly ever affected and maxillary incisors are most commonly affected. And then you will just look at a, an explanation there and then you will be like, OK, I know this concept, so let's just brush through. But remember that explanation and key concept. So key concept is more precise. Even if you're not reading the whole explanation, at least read the key concept. OK, let's see how to uh, address this. Dr. Sahil, what are your tips when you have this yes. paragraph? So if you open our explanations from the Meritors app, we have already mm -hmm. highlighted the important points in each question. Like if you can see in this explanation also, the first thing we have highlighted is any primary tooth in a child 71 months of age or younger. So this is the definition of early childhood cases as given by the AAPT, the American Academy for Pediatric Dentistry. Similarly, we have highlighted that in the last that the mandibular incisors are usually the unaffected ones and there is an early involvement of the maxillary. So this is basically the most commonly involved teeth we have highlighted. Other than this, if you see, there is another point, severe early childhood caries. Any children younger than three years, any child, any signs of a smooth surface caries is an indicative of severe early. So things like these you have to focus on. Instead of reading the whole paragraphs, the more you might, the ideally you should highlight the most important points so that you can remember those points for your exams. Perfect. Now, uh, by highlight, it is necessary that you write it down in your notes. So if you have a notebook where you have pediatric dentistry, just make sure that you write that ECC is 70 months or younger. So this is your question number one. So while you are doing a question as easy as this, you can prepare six other questions. So this this is your question. OK, the age and what is severe early childhood caries? This is your question number two, right? Then your third question is the pattern of teeth involved. So maxillary anterior teeth are most commonly involved. And then you can have a true or false type of question with the canines, right? And then mandibular incisors are usually affected, most commonly affected. This is your question number five. And then if you look at the key concept, there is also the reason why uh, maxillary incisors are among the first teeth and they erupt first and they are least protected by saliva. So this is option number, the question number six. So in one explanation, you can prepare more than a few other questions and that helps in reinforcing concepts and that is why reading explanations thoroughly is a very important task that you must practice right from the beginning of your preparation. Yes. And also in this question, instead of this, they can ask that a, a sequence based question also like arrange mm -hmm. from the most to least affected or least to most affected. So that is why it's important to focus on all the options. 100%. So just to give you an overview, you need to make sure that you have some information about the other options if it is relevant to the question. OK, yes. if they are made up options, it's OK. But if you have options which are uh, relevant to the topic, please make sure that you have more idea about the uh, topic in detail. 
you can bookmark questions or you can write them in your notes in your workbooks or you can you know uh, write it that you need to revise ecc at the end of your revision phase okay so let's look at another question now from endo and here factual question okay who has given root canal isthmus classification now this seems like a very okay question one factual question we don't we may not even know the classification but you're like hmm, i've read somewhere okay so the answer to this question is kim has the uh, kim was the one who gave the isthmus classification and this is the uh, pictorial representation now how do we deal with this reviewing dr sahil yes so now in this before moving on to the classification if we see the question hmm. see the the biggest difference between a good student and a brilliant student is that if let's suppose a good student is reading this question who gave root canal isthmus classification so they will think okay this was given by su and kim so they will mark kim and move on now what a brilliant student will do is they will analyze all the four options right even though they know the answer is kim but they will try to remember in this question itself that what did shinder do or what did trasner and ranko mm. do what did what mm. do so with this what will happen is they will be memorizing remembering four different questions here also and once they remember these four things if see if you know that shilder gave the warm vertical compaction technique or the mechanical and biological objectives of biomechanical preparation uh-huh. similarly krasner and ranko gave the laws of access opening so once you remember that okay they gave the laws then you will also have an idea that how many laws do i remember or do i know anything in depth or not so if you do not know then what will happen is you can focus you can go back and read the laws of access opening from this question itself uh-huh. similarly bertuki gave the root canal configuration so that is how you will review then after that you will go on to the explanation for the kim classification now in this you have to read both the you should know both the types in the written format as well as the pictorial representation because mm-hmm. they can ask you any of these they can give put a diagram and they can ask which type is this yes. so if we see there is a pattern to remember this starting from type 1 type 1 is a incomplete communication between the two canals similarly type 2 is a well defined communication so we can see this is like a earphone looking like a headphone type 2 the type 1 is looking like a very faint communication type 3 is a very broad communication but a very short isthmus between two canals so type 2 is broad but sh- type 3 is broad but short type 4 if we see we can see there are uh, four dots so type 4 is between three or more canals mm. and it can be either complete or incomplete type 5 is without any visible connection so if we see we are moving from incomplete nice. towards complete then we are moving for from two canals to three or more canals and then at last there are no visible connections so that is right. how you have to relate the things if they are forming a pattern you have to relate them because if you relate them you will have a better understanding and you will remember it for a longer period of time yes so if i were the student i would definitely bookmark this question because i want the visual understanding and i want this to be Uh, refreshed in my memory and this explanation would help me uh, not only see the classification that the question is asking but it will also help me go back to th- three other concepts by Schindler Krasner and Bertucci so it's it's a very ne- it's a necessary thing it's not uh, it's not something that we advise to do it is something that you must do when you are preparing look at the other options try to correlate them cross reference them in your mind map them to the other topic see if you know that topic if you don't you have to go through it you can find that topic in the bytes in the videos they will be discussed you will find more questions on these so if you think that there is something that's not making sense especially in the easier set of questions we don't want you to do this for very high end difficult surprise level kind of questions because that is a waste of time at this point of time so at this point of time if you see something that's simple and if it's not in your scope of understanding go through that concept while you are preparing for that subject right okay right. excellent doctor let's go to the next question from oral surgery <clears throat> in case of nasal fracture a uh, following radiograph so this is from oral radiology okay and which of the following views are used so what is view submento vertex view transorbital view and panorex uh, now i think this kind of question is always there in neat mbs exam 100% you will see which of the following views is required for what problem 
uh, this problem and what we so definitely something that you must focus on yeah so now in this type of a question if we see the explanations there is a table given now if we see the orange boxes are the ones which are of high usefulness in any given fracture for example if we see the waters view waters view is of high usefulness in the coronoid process fractures zygoma fracture orbit fractures and the maxillary sinus fractures similarly if we see the smv view is useful for the zygomatic arch fractures and the sphenoidal sinus fractures the blue ones are the medium effectiveness and the white ones are the low effectiveness now from this table we can have two types of questions one could be that a range which is high to low for a particular fracture like they can give for the zygoma fracture arrange these which will be the most useful to the least useful or other type of question is like we are given in this that for waters view which is the best one or for zygomatic arch fractures which is the best one so we need to know this table now the better method is because this box is will get very confusing the, the colors ideally we should try to write that okay for this fracture this is the best view this is the next best view so like that we can relate that okay waters view is best for these two or three fractures or for the lateral cef is better for these these fractures and again vice versa also we can do that uh, for the zygomatic arch fracture which are the best so these are the two methods for reading such type of a table yes perfect so now let's see in this question it says nasal fracture now nasal fracture would mean nasal bones over here and you can use cephalograms okay and you can use waters view as the principal ways of looking at nasal bones now in the options you do not have any cephalograms so it might get very confusing if you have just focused on one aspect of that table and you should also make sure that you are looking at the others view like here waters view although it is medium usefulness is the correct answer in this okay in this question the answer is waters view but for that you need to understand this table thoroughly you need to know that for ramus you can use either lateral ramus or panoramic radiograph right so there could be one or more options which might be correct and you have to be very careful while dealing with this kind of a question so what i would do is i would bookmark this table especially because it gives me 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 uh landmarks and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 uh landmarks and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so 17 into 8 questions which is a lot of questions so if you have prepared this table thoroughly you are very good with radiographs and this is something that is always asked so you should never miss on this table okay perfect now uh, you have the key concept so if you are very thorough with the topic at least read the key concept don't miss the key concept okay next uh, in this question dr sahil we have a radiograph so do you want to read the question yes so the question here is identify the syndrome based on the radiograph and an opg is given the four hmm. options are cleidocranial dysostosis creature collins syndrome obs syndrome and krausen's syndrome right now most of the time the quality of radiographs in the exam is not going to be very good so you should get used to that as well now what do we see here we see multiple uh, impacted teeth maybe mixed dentition we are not very sure what this is but we have to come to a conclusion based on option elimination again we will not go into option elimination here but the way to look at it is where do you see multiple supernumerary teeth if that is something that you can understand it is more than enough to answer this question now of all the different syndromes cleidocranial dysostosis and dysplasia is very important for your neat pg inict it has high yield it is a topic that comes very frequently how would you read this explanation dr sai yes so again the goal is to focus on the key points mm -hmm. first we will see what are the synonyms for this as we have seen here, given here mm -hmm. marian sentence disease muto mutational dysostosis and etc mm -hmm. because they can ask the question with this the option could be either mary sentence disease also instead of cleidocranial yes disease. yes then we have to see what are the dental findings and what are the non dental findings so mm -hmm. if we see the non dental findings there is a absence of a clavicle mm -hmm. or there are abnormalities in the skull mm -hmm. so these are the things the head is brachycephalic wide and short we have already highlighted those points 
Bone mm-hmm. and bones are common. Other than this, once we go to the dental findings, the mm-hmm. dental findings would be multiple unerupted supernumerities will be there. There mm-hmm. will be a retained deciduous dentition and a delayed mm-hmm. eruption of the permanent teeth. So if right. we can see the radiograph, the OPG which is shown, we can see all these findings. We can see um, something a mixed dentition, the retained deciduous we can see, and other than this we can see in the lower anteriors we can see multiple supernumerary teeth are there. In the upper uppers also we can see in the posterior upper right side there are multiple unerupted supernumerary teeth. So this is a classical finding for the cleidocranial dysososis or dysplasia. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Okay. Now, what I would also add here is uh, whenever you have an image-based question, try to capture the image for your understanding. If you have any clinical presentation images, automatically bookmark those questions. Because what happens is when you look at an image, you will be able to see a lot of features in this image itself. Okay, So all the images which are uh, giving you extra features are helpful in uh, identifying more clinical uh, representation of that condition. Absence of clavicles in this is very critical. So even if it is not mentioned, but if you have an image that shows absence of clavicles, then it is going to be very easy for you to answer. Now again, you should be able to correlate the other incorrect options and you should be able to know that Richard Collins syndrome has XYZ features, Mobius has ABC features, Cruzon syndrome as this, this, this features, okay? We are not going in the details of syndromes, but the idea is that you understand how to, uh, you know, maximize your efforts. Because if you just think, okay, mm, uh, mixed dentition, supernumerary, cleidocranial, I know everything about cleidocranial, that is wrong approach, right? Especially with these synonyms, it can get very confusing. So make sure that you are reading thoroughly and then you come back to key concepts and you read the key concept, okay? So numerous, unerupted, permanent and supernumerary teeth, distorted crowns and roots and shapes. A lot of times you might have such detailed uh, features that you miss out on these points, like distorted crown and root shapes. You might have just missed this out, but if it is just mentioned here in the question that identify the syndrome and then you have this distorted crown and something, something, and you have two features, two conditions where you have supernumerary teeth. One has maybe just uh, a conical kind of uh, supernumerary teeth. So also look at these smaller details because when you have very closely related options, you will be able to eliminate them. Okay, so with that, uh, Dr. Sahil, do you want to add anything to the strategy for reviewing explanations? We've covered uh, images, tables, paragraphs, case-based questions. Anything else that you think we should address? Yeah. So only thing is that uh, they have to focus on the keywords and they have to try to correlate all the options. And 100%. always read the question completely, read all four options. Even if you know that this is the correct answer, still read the, the three, three options once. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, I hope all the students who are watching this video found this interesting and useful. If you have any more such queries, uh, if you have any ideas that you want us to make videos on, please make sure that you write us a comment below. If you are not using the Meritas app, just download it right now from Play Store. Apple Store, it is free to download and you can just go through the whole app, feel the app and understand how much of value it can add to your MDS and INICT preparation. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube, subscribe us on YouTube, on Instagram, Telegram. And if you have any questions, reach out to our customer support. We are here to help you. Thank you so much for watching and all the best for your preparation. Thank you, students. All the best.